I present to you now something the likes of which you've never seen before. The most dangerous combination of professional sports. The skill, the strength, the stamina, and the ability of two men blended together as one. The most exciting combination in the history of professional wrestling. Twin sons of different mothers. Chris Adams. And Mike Currents. What in the world did we watch tonight? I just want to know <laughs> if somebody out there can tell me what we watched tonight. Uh, we are going over the pay-per-view weekend Survivor Series 2016, and we'll try to touch on the NXT TakeOver if the last, if the main event of Survivor Series allows us to get that in, uh, <laughs> Mike Currents is on vacation this week. He will not be on with us, but you have myself and always the opinionated Killjoy with us as well. Yeah. Hello, hey, hello Cleveland. Can you tell me what it is that we witnessed tonight in the main event? <laughs> in the main event, I'm okay, just yeah, let's straight get straight to it. Yeah, let's get to the the elephant in the room. Here's what my theory is. And everybody's up in arms, and I get it. I understand. But I also tap, am tapping in to what I believe they're going to lead up to. There's no way on God's green earth that Brock Lesnar is going to allow that to happen. And this is going to be at least very... Um, Temporarily, the new uh, Undertaker, the new Street. Think about it. This has money written all over it. There's going to be another match. It's going to be at WrestleMania because everybody said the same thing. Why? Why are they doing it now and not WrestleMania? This is why. The, think about it. Goldberg's not. I, I know. Case. I mean, was, he, yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, building up to WrestleMania, but you took all this time to build up to this match, to get everybody's hopes up. You get them confronting each other the last Monday Night Raw before the pay-per-view gets here, and you do something right for a change. You make everybody wait for the pay-per-view. You don't let them get into it with each other. There's no brawl that happens. There's just a hint of one about to happen, and you let Brock Lesnar as the heel walk out and frustrate the fans. They don't get to see what they want, just to get under a minute of two spears and one jackhammer in the story, in the match. Just to build up for WrestleMania, they could have at least put on a 10-minute match and gave us a little something. I mean, throw us a bone. But here's the thing. Goldberg cannot do a 10-minute match. He was blowing up just to get, as he was getting into the ring. You see him breathing heavy after the match. And he only did, what, three moves? If you or four, if you're counting the push, that's the reason. <laughs> but seriously, though, the thing is, they're setting it up, and he can do a little bit more ring work, ring conditioning, because that's all he needs. And he's an older guy. There's no way he was doing a ten minute match. There's no way he was doing a five minute match. There was no way. And they had to know. make it seem, they had to make it seem like Goldberg was a beast. He didn't look bad, but that's because he only did the moves that he knows. And so what? And they're going to make it sound like Brock Lesnar, the beast, got destroyed because he over or underestimated over. I mean, come on, man. They're going to make money hand over fist of that pay-per-view just on that alone because they did it tonight. I'm telling you. I think they're going to make hand over, you know make money hand over fist on WrestleMania regardless. I I, I, I know, mean really truly, make it you or more. I could have done they're, five I mean, minutes you know, at least. Yeah, no, but they will. I think that what they're going to do if they're smart and what if Bill Goldberg's smart is work up his ring condition because I don't I think they kind of just throw him in there. I don't think this was something that I, I not that I don't think it was planned out, but I think that they approached him. The guy's an older guy. I think he has to put in a good few months. I mean, till March or April, he has what? Let's see, four, four or five months. But so, five months to build up to April. Yeah, but five months is better than how many weeks did he have? He didn't have long. You saw him 
Did you see his uh, training regimen when he was doing his training regimen where he was doing ropes and doing all the kickboxing? He wasn't doing it quick. He wasn't doing it fast. He wasn't doing it hard. Because think about it. He probably does it just to be in shape, but not wrestling shape. He really, really, really has to get into some better shape. And I think by that time, he can give us a 10-minute match. Because by that time, nobody, everybody's going to be looking for two things. Him to have a one-minute match or him to have a 10-minute match. I don't think there's any in-between. The fans want more. You can't if he's got them. five months to prepare in five months, he better give me more than a 10 minute match. Well, if I'm a fan, if I'm a fan who does not pay for the network, the nine ninety nine a month, and I don't know any fan who is stupid enough to not pay <laughs> nine ninety nine a month versus waiting and paying every, every month, thirty four ninety nine or forty five ninety nine or whatever they are these days to get, you know, the pay-per-view, you come out so much cheaper the other way and get much more entertainment with it. But if I'm yeah. a fan who is still dumb enough to pay that monthly forty dollars a month because I didn't want nothing from last month, and now all I wanted to see was Survivor Series and WrestleMania or Royal Rumble, you know the big four they may have, or through three or four of the big ones they have each year. If I'm only doing that, and I was built up to that match, and all I got was one minute or less, I would be furious right now. I'm not really furious that this happened. Don't get me wrong. I just mm-hmm. don't get how you could hype it so hard and so big and let him blow him out that quick. You take someone you build up as this beast over all this time now. Even and even before, like I said on Facebook earlier, they did the same thing to John Cena. They built up Cena as the unbeatable, unstoppable force in the WWE who always comes out on top and wins his belt. And Lesnar comes back, who had been beatable before, by the way, comes back Mm -hmm. and dominates Cena like a rag doll, tosses him around like a sack of potatoes, beats him like, you know, a redheaded stepchild. You throw the, you know, the cliche in there and that's what happened. All right. He got beat bad and they made Lesnar look unstoppable. The closest they come to it of showing a competition was when he tried to, you know, put up Roman Reigns on him. And that got interrupted by the 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 start of Seth Rollins, basically. The thing that made him but, become the man or whatever, you know, yeah, cashing in no, his money in the bank. But here's the thing. They set Brock Lesnar up for Undertaker. That's what the problem was. Or not the problem, but that's what the plan was. So that's why he had to look unstoppable. Because at that point, nobody was beating the streets. Now, there's a, you know, you have your rumors about the street. Did Lesnar hurt him on purpose? Did Lesnar, did they say Lesnar's getting over? Or did The Undertaker really get hurt and they changed the pitch? The world may never know. But anyway, what I'm saying according, is there, According to The Undertaker, he said, now I didn't hear it out of his mouth. I don't know why I'm saying he said. The word is that The Undertaker mm-hmm. said... He wanted Brock Lesnar to be the one to break his streak, and he told him he wanted him to do it, and Lesnar didn't want to do it, and he told him, nope, this is on you. You're going to be the one that breaks my streak. And if that's the case, that would have been great if he just let him break it and retired, but he couldn't stay gone. Yeah. So, But did you see the look on people's faces in the crowd? Did you see the look on the faces Mm -hmm. of the people in the crowd? Just like it was when he beat Undertaker's streak, you had people with their hands on their head going, What? Did I just see that? Well, it's almost that's like a, the unbelievable moment, the unbelievable factor. And I know it's kind and of what that's... you're getting at and everything. I know it's what you're kind of getting at, but I just, I mean, unless Goldberg's going to keep showing up on Raw at least once a month or something along those lines and stay on the in, in front of people the whole time, I, I can't see just coming in and getting that win in under a minute. I mean, normally when someone comes in that hasn't been in the ring for a while, they're just showing up. They make a good showing of themselves, but the person that's the mainstay or more the, if you want to call Brock a full-time guy, more of a full-time guy than what Goldberg would be, you'd normally give the full-time guy the victory, but you make the other person look good. Well, that's just, not I, necessarily the case. That's not necessarily the case. Look what they did to CM Punk and The Rock. The Rock could not The Rock gets a buy on everything, though. I, well, the what Rock. I'm saying is still, still. I mean, Goldberg, regardless of what people say, is wrestling royalty. It doesn't matter whether he can wrestle or not. 
he's wrestling uh, royalty because he's larger than life. And that's how I'll Brock Lesnar that. is. But but you know what I'm saying? So people are saying, well, you know, maybe, you know, his, like, you know, uh, Jeff Teeter said. And he's a valid point. And I agree with it. You know, they want to show the kid, you know, he wants to show his kid, uh, him in the ring. This was his goodbye, his swan song. He just wanted to win in front of his kid and his family. That's well and good. But then somebody had a counterpoint. The WWE doesn't just do things, oh, to be nice. <laughs> that no, was me. <laughs> they're doing... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, my bad. Well, basically, but I said, WWE I said, I get it, but what do the WWE fans owe? Bill Goldberg's son. I mean, you know, I, I made the comment that my dad, I understand, back in his yeah. heyday, was pretty good at high school sports and rec league softball. But no one brought a big team up against him, so I could see him get out there and be a star shortstop or something. You know, they didn't have to show me. I mean, I understand. I look back and I see some of the things. There's pictures of him. There's this and that in his yearbook or whatever. Great. He was pretty good. Great for him back in you know, 1960, whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> he'd kill me if he heard that right now. He'd absolutely kill me. But um, at the same time, I mean, what do we owe his kid? I can't see that being the main reason why they did that. Well, I mean, it's nice. I agree. It's nice, but I can't see it being the main reason. I'm going to tell you what I've been reading a little bit of since this happened. Yeah. This short time between the time that was, since it ended and now. A bunch of people are blowing up everything from Twitter to Facebook and everything else, and there are people, you know, everybody's always in the know, you know, and I'm not in the know. I'm not going to claim to be. I can only speculate, just like you can only speculate, but they're saying, well, the word is he, Goldberg, uh, tweaked himself while he was training before the match a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. and he wasn't able to be to make anything big of it, so they made a short ending of it. And uh, th- they made him look invincible because they're going to build us something bigger later now. But until he gets real time to train, kind of like what you said with the real time to train, what they're throwing in mm-hmm. that he hurt himself before the match got there and he couldn't go any kind of a, a long match. Well, we knew we wouldn't go a long match anyway. I was picturing mm-hmm. 10, 12 minutes tops with both of them huffing and puffing probably, you know, and getting the victory. Mm-hmm. I mean, Lesnar would go mm-hmm. longer. He did with The Undertaker. But, mm-hmm. I mean, Goldberg would just absolutely be falling out. But I, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't see this coming with one minute or less. I just didn't. I think, I, honestly, I I don't believe that rumor because every time you turn around, it's oh because a wrestler got hurt. They changed the right. pitch because a wrestler got hurt. I think Bill Goldberg's the kind of guy. He's been in football. He's a, he's. A, I think he's a tough guy. I think he's one of those old school. He would just hack it. You know, do what he has to do. I think a little bit of it was was because of his conditioning, but I also think that they they had this planned out. I honestly believe they had this planned out from when he, he teased it on ESPN. Because ESPN and WWE have a little thing going on because of right. Jonathan Coachman and all that stuff. Um, all right. I really believe that this was all a tease, and we fell for it hook, line, and sinker. I think they knew. As soon as they contacted Bill Goldberg, they talked about it. That was going to be the finish, regardless of how of how his conditioning was or not. I honestly believe they wanted to have Bill Goldberg look larger than life, because you know. And it, and look, think about it. It made the, when he pushed him down. Let's let's just we'll talk tape tape for a second. When he pushed him down, Brock got up. He wasn't expecting a spear, so he's hurt. He tries to get up again and gets speared again. And then they mm-hmm. set it up for the jackhammer. I think he caught, you know, he caught him with his pants down, so to speak, kayfabe. And that's why, for me, it could be realistic. You know, it what can I mean? be. I, if you're looking at it from that point of view, it definitely can be because even the announcers made it say, "Look at how he's getting up. Look how hurt he looks standing up. Did he break a rib with that spear? Did he break a rib with that mm-hmm. second spear? Well, if he didn't, he sure got one broken with that jackhammer." You know, mm-hmm. something had to hurt him at that point to where he couldn't get up. And he still wasn't moving much even after the fact. Mm-hmm. And was slow to, it was, was slow to get up and leave, they say. So they I see I see how they build it up and, and it's cool. It's just you know, it's just such a surprising thing when you were watching it that it's still an hour and fifteen minutes later roughly and it's still sinking into me that they gave them one full minute in front of the camera. When the match before that Blew that everything out of the water tonight, to, for me at least. Yeah, but, anyway, uh, but 
Okay, let's get to that then, since we're going to transition. Let's right. transition How to do you follow up on that? that match. Well, that's the thing. First of all, it seemed rushed. The, you know, the, the Brock Goldberg seemed rushed to get in the ring. It did. It seemed rushed. Why? Because they had to make that 1030 deadline. And I think Shane McMahon slowed down that match to a crawl every time he was in the ring. You know, he had some high spots, and he did some punches and everything, but his arm drags were terrible. He botched a lot. He, did he, he legit like he get hurt? Oxygen. Did he legit get know. hurt with that spear? I mean, to I me, it know, looked like cause he, because he didn't count him out for the three count. The referee did not mm-hmm. count, and the referee stopped what was going on, and they never stop what's going on unless somebody legit gets hurt, it seems like, and and, and don't yeah. go through with a count like that. He stopped mm-hmm. and acted like he was feeling under his shoulders for about, I don't know, a good 10, 15 seconds. It don't take yeah. you that long to realize your hand's under his shoulders. No. It's not on the mat. He's talking to him while he's doing this, apparently, to make sure he's okay, and he's seeing what's going on with him. That's what I was going to say. If you looked at his eyes, he looked like he was completely out of it. He might even have a concussion from hitting the back of his head on the ring when he come down. But Man, that was that was just uh, it was brutal. That was a brutal, brutal spot. It was. Brutal. It was. And and the, the the on uh, on Twitter they were blowing up about that, saying that the crowd that he, even the crowd could tell that Roman Reigns botched that spot and caused mm-hmm. that to happen. That's why they were booing him so hard at that point when it happened. <laughs> but they boo him anyway, so I don't know well, what difference he, it, it makes. Could have been, it could have been him. It could have been. It could have been Shane too, because Shane was botching a lot. He didn't look yes. like a wrestler. He looked like a guy in, in trying to survive. Like he didn't. Sell, like even when him selling wasn't good. At one point, at one point when he's sliding down and Roman Reigns is throwing clotheslines. Eventually, Roman Reigns had to stop because he was clotheslining the turnbuckle because he was all yes. the way down. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I just and, and I really legitimately think that he was so out of shape. That's why he was laying there. I don't think well, he was I'm an say, act. I don't maybe think, he's not. Know. That's exactly what I'm saying. Maybe he was not in shape enough to do those things he did: flying from the top mm-hmm. rope, smashing through Strowman onto that table, trying to mm-hmm. fly across the ring and catch that old kick that he used to that he stole from Rob Van Dam. You know, yeah, from one side to, to the coast. other. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah. It's, he's he doesn't look like he stays in any kind of ring shape anyway. If you look at him, he's about the same ring shape I am, which is a ring around his belly, you know, from belly to back. You know, that's no, on the only ring looked, he had he going on. In shape. He looked in shape, but however, um, looks like the shape of a donut. He didn't look ring. He didn't look in ring shape. You understand what I mean? He's far he from ring shape. He didn't look in ring shape. shape at all. You know. What and I speaking mean? of out of breath. He, Looked like he was out of breath most of the time too. Yeah. Mhm. That's Couldn't what I'm saying. Up. He was just—he looked. Um, his selling wasn't good. He sold like a person that didn't know how to wrestle. And we know Shane knows how to wrestle. We know Shane can wrestle. But he was doing—you could tell—he was doing punches. That was his signature. The punching, which didn't look good. Um. The arm drags, like I said, didn't look good. At one point, he uh, you could see Jericho had to tell him the small package, uh, Jericho, um, and that didn't look good. He didn't deserve to be in the ring. Uh, I think people wanted him to be there, but I think it was you know, a novelty. He looked pretty damn good against The Undertaker. He didn't look good tonight, and I think no, you showed brought up- that he's out. You know, you brought up a good a good name right there. If the Undertaker shows up for SmackDown on that 900th episode and says he's back on SmackDown, why don't they have the Undertaker on that team for SmackDown? You would think. You would think. It's it. That's what but, really got me. Now, now that being said, I figured 110 percent that SmackDown was going to come out on top of that match in the end because SmackDown. Even though a lot of people, um, there's a lot of fans that they're SmackDown Live. When we did the Team Red, Team Blue thing not too, while, not too long ago, it was pretty mm-hmm. much a unanimous Team Red deal for everybody that, that did chime in. Even the people mm-hmm. who chimed in on, on the Facebook um, when I posed that question, most everybody was Team Red with Raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, SmackDown mm-hmm. was kind of losing its luster a little bit, and they needed a boost. And look um, at it. Yeah. Look at, Look at who they put back in the forefront finally. 
Who do they bring back up now? Who do they fall back on when they needed something to stand up for them? Bray Wyatt, mm-hmm. the Wyatt family yeah. that they've been putting on the back burner for all this time and letting them, you know, be be on on the losing end on a couple of things that they probably should have been on the winning end of. And now Man, they turn they around and they've got Randy Orton in the in the in the Wyatt family now. Well, because I was they saying, because they need him. They need him. Right. And that's the that's the shame of it. They shouldn't. Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family should have taken over the WWE two years ago. They really mm-hmm. should have. I don't Absolutely. understand it. I'll never understand it. And now they have to have somebody. First of all, my wife looked at me, and she was watching, and she was like, why is he, like, it doesn't make sense. And it really doesn't. Like, it just doesn't. Like, he's too clean-cut looking. He doesn't, he doesn't fit. He doesn't fit mm-hmm. regardless of what you try to do with him. He doesn't fit the Wyatt family. Not at all. I mean, they didn't let him disappear. For if, look, if they were going to do it, they should have done it right. He should have disappeared after being, like, let's say, injured by the Wyatt family, disappears for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. You start seeing hints of somebody coming back. They're giving you this uh, little video, little okay. vignettes or something of somebody talking, but the voice is masqueraded or something, or it's somebody else's voice doing the voiceover, whatever the case, however you want to do that. Yeah. And then have him come yeah. back with a little grizzled look to him or something. He doesn't have to be the little – that is, if he can grow facial hair. I don't know. He's got that baby face look pretty much all his career for the most part. He doesn't grow you know, a beard that much it doesn't look like or anything like that. So he's not going to have no Bray Wyatt kind of look going on, no Luke Harper. That's what made the Wyatts so together like they were, that they belonged. They had that mm. same look, that same feel, and they just they don't have it. They don't, they didn't have, they don't have it with, uh, with, with Randy Orton. He's kind of standing no, out. You know, you know even with Daniel Bryan, had? even with Bryan, yeah, they would exactly. have had the beard at least. Yeah, but still, he wasn't. He, it didn't. He didn't have that feel. You know who they should, and they. I feel like they're getting that way toward his brother, Bo Dallas. Why not? Why not put them in? He's he's already growing the beard. He has that attitude. He he can feed off of his brother. It's a no brainer. But they have him Maybe in just... Bo leave. It's right. Just, whatever. It, I don't know. Maybe like that's what I, have you seen a lot of him here lately? Bo Dallas on what TV. I mean, I haven't noticed him very much. I haven't watched all the shows or anything. But has he been out on TV very much at all? Who uh, Bo? Yes, he yeah, has. Bo Dallas. He's doing that, yeah, he's doing that Bo Lee stuff. He, you know, he was doing that. You know, um, I forget the tag name now, but he's attacking his former friends. The problem is he jobbed to somebody recently, and it kind of crushed that momentum. I mean, he's been very aggressive lately, very angry. He could easily be in the Wyatt family. He could easily be somebody that joins the Wyatt family and, and can use Wyatt. He can change his name to Bo Wyatt. Like, it's just a no-brainer. He's throwing a beard. I don't know. I just, I don't know. But anyway, let's get back. Let's get to... Let's get back to the to the program, the uh, the pay per view itself. That match though, it was insane. It really was. There was a lot of high spots. Um, it was a little some funny stuff like um, what's his name, Ko using the uh, list. the list of Jericho. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was great. Um, I I am surprised. Some of the eliminations tonight in other yeah. matches as well, like the New Day gets eliminated. Like that was crazy. I didn't, it was crazy, and that was a great match too. That was that was pretty good too. I'm not gonna lie. It, it, I couldn't believe it, wasn't it was bad. down to the Usos, huh? I mean, it, it wasn't bad, but I mean, it, I don't know. I, I kind of expected more of it to be honest with you. It just wasn't that great, but it wasn't bad either. Um, I. I kind of like the look they gave the Usos now. I mean, they were just, you know, too goody-goody for too long. The little heel look to them where they think they're kind of all bad and everything. That kind of works for them right now. I like that. But And I'm not sold at all on this Breezango or whatever they call those village people that were out there tonight. I, I just don't <laughs> get that team at all. <laughs> Yes, I don't understand that whole 
Breeze Dongo thing. Um, I think they're trying to go for comedy. I don't think it's working. I think it's, it's a not. Uh, it's a one trick pony. They are better wrestlers than that. I know that they were. First of all, Tyler Breeze has Tyler Breeze. He's been Tyler Breeze, you know, whatever. But to get to pin Fon Dongo on, I forget whoever that guy is, what, what his real name is, uh, or his other wrestling name is. Um, he's a great. Great worker, he's a great competitor. Put put him in another thing. This is ridiculous. Same thing with the shining stars. Way to um, stereotype them and then give them uh, a crappy gimmick. I mean, they were phenomenal tonight. But they really were. I think they worked the best of anybody in that ring, and that's the truth. They really did. Although Cesaro was on fire, Cesaro looked amazing. Um, and, and you know, SmackDown doesn't have great tag teams. It doesn't seem like it seemed like they took all the great tag teams or all the better tag teams and put them on Raw. Now the Usos are, you know, they're always going to be around. They're, I guess you know they're, they're good because they, they've already proven themselves there. And you get American Alpha. Now I don't, mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not against, I'm not against Heath Slater and Rhino having the belts. I've always thought that Heath Slater could be used better than what he has been used. I have no problem with that, but. I'm not big on the hype brothers. I do like um, mm-hmm. uh, the one dude as an individual. Um, mm-hmm. And, of course, I'm drawing a blank on his name, wouldn't you know, but uh, the one that usually... Wally? No, Mojo no, Wally? no. No, not him. Oh, he, Zach... He's like a... Uh, oh, no, definitely not Mojo Rawley. Uh, Zach Ryder. Zach Ryder, uh, yeah. Zach Ryder, I could get into him and some kind of a intercontinental push. Like when he got that title the one time, you know, me and Mike were like, we're really happy he got that title. It was like, finally, they're going to make use of him for something. You know, the fans are behind him. The fans like him. And then he lost it the very next night on Raw to the, you know, to the Miz. It's really ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they wanted, I think they wanted to just give him and, his WrestleMania moment, to be quite and honest. And that Mojo, and he, Mojo Riley, is that his name? Mojo Riley? Raleigh. Raleigh. I mean, what is he, like yeah, a Vinny Jones want to be? Or something? I I don't know. I'm not. I don't get him. Uh, he did a lot of crazy stuff to the point where Zach <laughs> Zach was like, "What are you doing?" But he seems. I don't know if that's his gig or they're setting it. Whatever. Um, I think he's unnecessary. I'm surprised. I'd rather have the Ascension in there than Brizongo, to be quite honest. <laughs> you know, at that point. Yeah. Um, it's, or they're the more believable. Villains. Jesus. You know, right, yeah. and they're more believable at least. What happened to the Vaude villains? Oh, they got jobbed out. They're jobbed out. Forget it. They're like not, the Ascension, gonna... like the Ascension yeah. got brought up and jobbed out pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm, uh, you know, DIY or the Revival, and they're saying, "Hey, mm-hmm. you guys want to come up to SmackDown?" I'm like, "Nah, I'm good, thanks. I don't think so. <laughs> no. I'm cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm good where I'm at. It's okay. I, I lost. It's cool. You know, I'll sit down here and." You know, play around with the Authors of Pain because it's a cool name, you know. Yeah. <laughs> authors of Pain. Yeah. Uh, authors of Pain. Oh, Jesus Christ. The Authors of Pain. Uh, what was DIY stand for? Does it stand for something? Other than do it yourself. Obvious? <laughs> Other than obvious. I mean, why are they called DIY? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I haven't watched I don't know, enough. I don't, yeah, I don't. The thing is, I don't. I don't watch um, NXT enough. To be quite honest, I watched it. The other a couple of nights ago, well, one day night I watched it, and I just, to be quite honest, I couldn't get into it. I mean, I love, I love Knock, I love, you know, Samoa Joe, I love the big players. But did you the watch it Saturday? Players, no, I didn't watch it Saturday. Oh God, you be I'm gonna tell you what. Let me tell you now. All right, we're, we're gonna step away from Survivor Series just for a second. We're, I'm, I'm just gonna run down this NXT card real quick. All right, yeah, just so I know I get it in at least. But Bobby Roode comes out. And is every bit as glorious as his song made him to be over Ty Dillinger, although it was a pretty decent match. Ty Dillinger, I don't know a lot about him, but the yeah. match between the two of them was pretty good, actually. I was wondering mm-hmm. where Austin Aries was. I didn't see anything with Austin Aries, and I thought Eric Young had made his debut there and was supposed to be a big deal, but I didn't see anything with him in that pay-per-view either. Um, the uh, Unless they were a part of the tag team tournament for the Dusty Memorial, and they were out already. That could be what it was. Um, yes. Uh, Austin Aries teamed with somebody and got knocked out because I remember going, Austin Aries, tag team? 
I thought they were going to make him bigger, and apparently they didn't. Uh, well, apparently, Bobby Roode, I don't know. Bobby Roode yeah. and Ty Dillinger were a tag team, I thought, in that. And um, yes. uh, Bobby Roode they walked were. out on walked out on Dillinger, let him get beat, and that's what caused you know this this confrontation, this this match to come about. But then they had mm-hmm. Alters of Pain win the the Dusty Memorial Cup. Uh, mm-hmm. DIY comes out in its best two out of three match against the Revival and beats the Revival two out of three to take the belts. And you know, of course, DIY, uh, those are two of those guys I mentioned to you when we were kind of talking uh, over Facebook the other day about the uh, Global Force Wrestling roster. They how they still had some of these guys uh, on their yeah, roster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thomas yeah. Tiampa and uh, Johnny Gargano. Uh, Gargano. That's who, yeah, that's who DIY is. And uh, so they they win two out of three and take the NXT tag belts. It was a great two out of three match they had. It was a, that was a really really great match. Uh, mm-hmm. I was really surprised by how how good those two teams were together. How great it was to be honest with you. Oscar um, facing Mickey James. Mickey James put on a pretty good showing considering she hadn't been in the WWE ring for quite some time. I know she was in TNA for a bit. And I don't know how long it's been since she's been in a wrestling ring in general. But it had a yeah. great match with Oscar too, I thought. Um, and then, of course, the main event, Samoa Joe against uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. And uh, I, I'm going to tell you something. I, a lot of people, I'm going to get some flack from this, I'm sure. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, and I understand he's popular. Um, he's really big in Japan, for sure. I, and his entrance, his, his ring music is kind of cool. The crowd gets into it, for sure. Uh, I just don't get the... Um, sensation everybody gets with Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, he doesn't look like he does anything any better than what an AJ Styles does or what a Seth Rollins does. It's not, it's nothing we haven't seen before out of a half a dozen people or more that's in the WWE already, including someone like a Sami Zayn, uh, even a Dolph Ziggler, uh, I, I, Kevin Owens, for example. I mean, he does a lot mm-hmm. of the same stuff. He's got some really strong, stiff kicks. And if that's the well, big deal the about him, then, you know... Well, no, here's the thing. Imagine having those people that you mentioned. Now, imagine having their charisma a hundredfold. Because if you think about it, all those guys, Sammy Zane, good guy, but there's something about him that's just off. He comes off too plain, and he just... It doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Ziggler has charisma but there's there's something there too something to stop him Teo has the dif- a different kind of charisma but not still something blocking him Nakamura has this presence about him he has this style about him so he has this pres- uh, presentation about him I saw one time it was oh it was Wrestlemania weekend and they were showing some of the NXT guys wrestling before the event. And somebody blew him a kiss, and he caught the kiss, looked at it like, you know, fake, threw it on the ground as if it was real, and then, like, stomped on it like, you know, like a, like a cigarette. And I thought, like, that's what I'm saying is he brings – imagine bringing the, re- the, the charisma, the showmanship, and the wrestling. And that's why I think he's so big. On top of, he does it – all with body language, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Cool. Well, I don't know. I mean, to me, there's a lot of them I don't get, but maybe this next caller calling in can give us an idea about him himself. We have a caller coming on the line here momentarily at 865 255 number. As soon as you're on the line, you can hear me. Let me know you're there. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Hey, who we got today? Lee. I thought I recognized that 865 area code. Lee, how's it going? Pretty good, man. How you doing? Pretty good. What you think about the show tonight? I can't understand the ending for anything. Yeah, we've been, we've been knocking sense. that around a bit. It's been crazy. We were talking about that quite a bit there. And uh, the, <laughs> the best we can build up to is like uh, KJ here said, was that they're building up for something bigger at WrestleMania. Could be. It, you know, Goldberg could have decided maybe to um, do more than just one. Yeah, well, if they're smart, if they're smart, the money is there. 
I'm sure the money will be there for him. What do you think uh, about what we just mentioned about NXT a moment ago? Are you a Shinsuke Nakamura fan yourself, or are yeah, you uh, I like not? Him a lot. Do you? I was just telling. I was just saying. I, I don't. I don't get the fascination with him. I mean, he's he's a good wrestler, but I've seen a lot of others. And uh, KJ, what you were saying a moment ago about his presence about him, I, I he's got a great ring presence. The fans like him and everything. But I, I I think the big turnoff for me is is that when he talks, I don't hardly understand what he's trying to say. Great in ring, well, but don't give him the mic. I guess is what I get at. I don't know. Um, he has a semi decent uh, understanding of the American language. Um, he has uh, too thick of a Japanese accent so the broken English is, is pretty bad. But the reason why I like him is because universally people can get behind him through his the way that he expresses himself. He's a very expressive person. Um should they give him the mic? Of course you know of course not. But by the same token, let him speak, you know, what he you know, what he knows, you know, as far as English is concerned. Um you know, so give him the mic, but don't let him have the mic for too long. You know what I mean? It's like Brock Lesnar. I'd rather hear Nakamura than Brock Lesnar sometimes. Like what do you think, Lee? He, he can speak English way better than what they're having him do. I don't know. I've, I've never heard him talk that much, so I, I can't say myself. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't watch a lot of New Japan, so... I never heard him talk there uh, when he was a part of the Bullet Club or anything. Or so I'm not sure how much better he is than what he portrays. I've heard him on a couple of videos from New Japan where he was speaking in English, and it's ten times better than what they're having him do right now. Uh, it just doesn't make sense yeah. to do that, though. Oh, who knows? Who knows? It doesn't make sense anymore. So the WWE will have credit to bring him to the States and teach him. I don't know. I, I guess I could see something like that. I'm not sure, but I don't know. Did you watch the uh, Did you watch the NXT Takeover pay per view, Lee? Yeah. All right. So, what was I your don't overall that ending? What was your overall thought about that? I don't understand the ending of that one because what I been reading Samoa Joe's supposed to be going to the main roster soon. Makes and you wonder if maybe they flip flopped the idea. Did they flip flop it? Are they bringing Shinsuke Nakamura up instead? Who knows? Yeah. They could. I mean, Nakamura has been there a little bit longer than Samoa Joe has as far as NXT, hasn't he? No. He hasn't? Joe's been there a little longer. I thought, yeah, I thought Nakamura came longer. first. Uh-uh. See, KJ, you're supposed to be backing me up on these things and telling me what's right and what's not. Hey, hey, man, I was putting you there to see. I, I wasn't trying to, you know, hang you. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, it's kind of like the guy. It, it's kind of like the NWA guy that I acted like was still wrestling in the '50s and '60s, who was dead in 1920 or something. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Illy, Illy you missed good. that one. Thank goodness. I don't remember the person's but name both anymore. Excuse me. Uh, both pay-per-views, though, were really good, considering. I liked them both. It, I did. I mean, to me, the main uh, the, the Raw versus SmackDown men should have been the main event, I thought. it. I don't see how you top that, what they had for that match. Uh, mm-hmm. Because, and I don't know, that, like KJ said, or that's part of the reason maybe for the squash match. Maybe it was because they had limited time, had to cut it shorter, I don't know, but that the five on five Raw versus SmackDown men's match I thought was great and it built up great storylines to build off of because we've been talking about the idea, KJ, if you remember for the last couple of weeks, the possibility of seeing the Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho turn on each other, the whole mm-hmm. best friend angle being split up, you know. And now mm-hmm. you got something where they built up some more Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles, some more build up in that. Uh, possibility of seeing Sami Zayn being kicked off of Raw because he lost the match. He may go to SmackDown, then you may see Miz defect over to Raw or something. They're saying there's a lot of stories that's kind of been built up with this pay per view. 
And and let's but, and let's not forget let's not forget the uh very, very brief reunion of the shield. Yes, that could be something uh, to build on bigger later too. It could be happening, later, you yeah. never know. That could definitely happen. Uh you could see something where they get so mad, uh the way the storyline gets built up, you may see something where uh SmackDown gets mad and sends Dean Ambrose off for what he did. You know, he gets that, shipped off to Raw, and now you got a Shield reunion at that point, possibly building up. You never I can know. see that happening. Mm-hmm. Yes, that would be and, that would be something they could have kicked be around the, for a while. And I think that's going to be the first time where uh, where uh, what's his name Roman Reigns won't get booed so much. Oh, that's the only time he yeah. didn't get booed before is when he was a part of the Shield. Because he See, didn't every talk time much, that he they just do something like that, they, yeah, they mark they mark out. And this is what well, I said yeah. to this is what I said to my wife because my wife, you know, she's all about Roman Reigns for the wrong reasons. I looked at my son <laughs> tonight and said, uh, "The reason why mommy likes him is for the wrong reasons. He wants she wants him to be the new daddy." So, um, <laughs> son of a bitch. And then you right. um, but Roman Reigns, I said, I don't understand it. Booze, 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 everywhere he goes. Everywhere he goes, except for maybe uh, two states. And make him a heel. Make him a heel. And my wife's like, well, the ladies. I said, ladies love bad boys. Stop. Come on. Really? They were all over Shawn Michaels all those years. Yeah, but Shawn Michaels didn't get booed. No, I'm just you saying, I mean? you're talking about how the women like the bad boys. I said they were all over Shawn Michaels all them years. Oh, yeah, he was I, bad. So you make a, a great point, a great point in that. But did you hear them earlier, guys? Did you hear them earlier, how they booed him so many times in the match, but when they had the shield moment, the roof was about to pop off? <laughs> and they all said, when he, when he went, oh, that was like they did it all in unison. They, they did it with him. They were so happy. I was I was jumping up and down like a little kid. I was so happy. I was marking out hard. I was like, yes. I was like, you're going to have Ambrose come out here and not. But as soon as they looked over to the, the security guards, I was like, it's on. It's on. And that was it. And I couldn't be happy. But um, let's let's talk about the other matches that are on. I, I thought that um, I thought this, the Zane um. Um, this match wasn't bad. Um, it was not. It was not bad at all. Uh, I was kind of hoping yeah. to see Sami Zayn, to be honest with you, get the belt, though. Yeah, but I think that's what everybody wanted, and sometimes WWE's like, we're going to give him this, but we're not going to give him that. We're going to give him this. We're not going to give him this. And I think that that's that, a good thing, you know? That title needs to stay on SmackDown, though. Uh, it does, because what, what more... Could you give to Raw? Like you have to let Raw be Raw as it is now, and you have to let SmackDown catch up because it's not like I don't want to watch SmackDown. Like I hate to say it, I'm like, eh. you know what I mean? Like it's just to me, it's mess. It's it's Raw light, you know. Well, um, I wonder what what's up with okay. the cruiserweights. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna bring what? it up in a minute. Why do they have Baron Corbin just go in and just completely smash the match like they did? What's the build up for that? It's not that he did um, it for Brian Kendrick. He hit him first and leveled him, and then went straight yeah. for Sincar, um, or Callisto, I mean. I know that him and Callisto have a thing or something where he says Callisto's this pest or whatever, and he's got something against him and all, but he went in and completely put Kendrick out first, and, and unless he was doing it to cost Callisto the match, and that's why he did it, hit him first or that, something. But That's what I, I got out of it. Yeah, but I just I, – I don't get that. I mean, I mean, it, to me, what they needed to do was take that uh, Cruiserweight title and put that on SmackDown because that 205 Live, it's the, that's going to be like the day right after SmackDown, right? It's going to be Raw yeah. and SmackDown, mm-hmm. and Wednesdays they're going to have – I believe it's Wednesdays. They're going to have NXT, then the uh, 205 Live, right? I, I don't know. Like I, I thought it might have been – I thought I heard it was going to be on Tuesdays. Well, if it's going to be on Tuesday, on Thursday, then it for sure exactly. makes a difference. That's a big difference, and they should definitely have it on SmackDown if it's going to be yeah. on that day because you go from the show SmackDown straight to the WWE Network to watch 205 Live all that night. You might get a taste exactly. of it on the show, but then you watch right, the rest of the Tuesday. show on it. 
We'll Even see the right, image. Because it's, it's on the 29th. It's, it's going to be debuting on the 29th, which is a Tuesday, so he's absolutely correct. That would have made perfect yeah. sense then to have it go back to there, and instead they squashed the match. That didn't that didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Here's another well, Raw needs it. <laughs> for the three hours, they need the cruiserweight. Raw yeah. does? I think so, because that three yeah. hours is so drug out. Everybody's bored by the time the third hour comes about. But the problem is when the when the cruiserweights come out during Raw, if y'all have noticed lately, the crowds have not been into it. When they were in, um, where were they at the last wait? Well, last week was it uh, was it Scotland or was it Ireland they were in? Yeah, Glasgow. Yeah, Glasgow. Okay, so the, they were not into them at all. Did you notice that? Mm-hmm. It's like they were just watching. They're no. like, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good spot. All right. Well, when's the big guys coming out? You know, really, come on. Bring the rare ones out. Send the little guys back. They weren't well, into it. The thing. Well, here's the thing. Let's go back to Baron Corbin. Why is this, why is he going against Cruzo? Why Why is he doing that? That's one. Two, why would they say Shane McMahon and put him in place of Baron Corbin when we you would need Baron Corbin to offset um what's his name Braun Strowman. Strowman. You understand what I mean? You know exactly. what I mean? Why would you Why would you do that? It makes no sense. You put him in a a, a, a feud. Uh, 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 it's a useless feud. It's futile. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. You have a big guy who's supposed to be a monster, and he's going against Kalisto. Are you trying to put Kalisto over? And why? Is, is he a cruiserweight? Is he not a cruiserweight? Like, I'm so confused right now. Well, it, it, here's something else for you that's confusing then. Since we're you know kind of covering the whole show here, we got one more match, I believe it was, on the main uh, pay-per-view, and that was the women's Raw versus SmackDown. How do you go, yeah. what they say, or you know, to hell and back, with the Hell in a Cell match with Sasha Banks and Charlotte, and now all of a sudden they're just able – to be side by side in the ring, you know, with no problem facing the other brand. Uh, Bailey, who's been jumped quite a few times in the past and had lots of trouble with Charlotte, how is she able to stand side by side like that? And I know that's how they built up both the women's and the men's both, but some of these have been a little more stronger confrontations than the others were, yet we're to believe that they can be friendly and tag team against the other division because they're a separate brand they're representing their brand. It's, it's crazy what they yeah, want yeah. you to believe sometimes. No, you're you're right, but by the same token, when when it's told in kayfabe that your job's in jeopardy, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, Charlotte, who cares? You're not getting rid of Charlotte, you know what I mean? She's the brand. But um, I'm surprised that they got rid of, like I said in the tag team match, uh, they got rid of, uh, what's his name first? The, uh, the New Day. And then they got one of the first people to get knocked off, was who? Uh, Sasha Banks. You know what I mean? Like right. you're like what? Right. Um. Some big what? Dean Ambrose. Mm-hmm. As far he he was exactly. the first eliminated, right? So I mean, so uh, some big names went out first. I was surprised of all of them to see the New Day go out first in the tag division, the tag match. Absolutely. I thought since Absolutely. they were captains, they would last a little bit longer than they did. Now, you guys, let me ask you both this: Come Monday night, tomorrow night, what's going to be the turnout? When Stephanie McMahon goes to the ring and with Raw losing that match with the men out there, that she told them all, like, like your jobs depend on it because they do. And you had KO go out and get himself disqualified. Chris Jericho not paying attention about what was going on, only paying attention to his papers that were flying everywhere. It gets put out right after that. You know, then they have all this other stuff go down. What's going to be the turnout from that Monday night? Yeah, Lee, what do you got? Example out of Sami Zayn and threaten all the others. I can see that being the case because there's been talk with Sami Zayn being shipped anyway to to SmackDown for uh, several weeks at least. You've been, I've been reading it online in different places about how they've been mm-hmm. hearing this possibility that could happen. So that would make a lot of sense to say, hey, this guy was a rising star on our brand and you see what we did to him. You think we won't do it to you next time? You know, be prepared. I, I can see what something about, like that happening. What about, um, what about 
I mean, the Shield. What about them two working with, you know, Ambrose? Even well, that was to benefit moment. them, though. That was benefiting huh? them. They got rid of AJ Styles. Yeah, sure. That benefited them. So right. that's okay. But can that's you see true. them doing this? Backlash on both sides on Monday and Tuesday night. Backlash at Sami Zayn for losing. Backlash at Dean Ambrose for what he did. Hey, let's propose a trade. We want Sami Zayn over here to feud with The Miz for that title. We're bringing him over here. We're going to give you Dean Ambrose because, well, you know, he ticked us off. He worked with your guys, and he helped us lose the match. We're sending him back. We're just going to send him over there. He wants to be there anyway or something. You can see them making a the flip-flop of those mm-hmm. two in a way to get a feud mm-hmm. between Sami Zayn and The Miz for the Intercontinental title and maybe at that point pushing Sami Zayn a little bit further than what they have so far. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, The Miz, let's face it, he's been around for a while. Some of us like him. Some of us don't. I get kind of tired of him sometimes. But he plays his but, role yeah. very well. Exactly. Two, yes, very well. But how about what they'll do to AJ? Because AJ's one of the ones. He was the one that got um, Ambrose pinned in the first place. <laughs> if you remember. Yeah, but, he's, yeah, but, but he's their champion. He ain't going nowhere. He, yeah, he's the draw. He's going no, no. It doesn't. Yeah, but they could punish him anyway. You understand what I mean? Like, they, well, they you could have a punishment. Make it for case any reason, they could have a punishment. Say again, Lee. Right. I said they'll just make him defend his title against someone. Right. Or, you they'll know, throw like somebody big out there on him or something. Yeah. Or yeah, exactly. Or triple threat or fatal four way. Some you know, some stuff like that they'll do, but they're not going to get rid of him because you know he's he's the star power. Did you hear the people just chanting his name only in the ring earlier when they were out there? Uh-huh. It was all about uh-huh. AJ Styles. It's all about AJ mm-hmm. Styles. Every time he's in the ring, although people laugh and say he don't cut great promos sometimes, and he don't. He's not a great promo guy. He's not the Rock. There's not many people who are going to be a great promo guy. You got people who mm-hmm. can just hold their own a little bit. But they're not great. But they do enough to get by with, and they show out in the ring. Then you got some that just, you know, they got the ring presence, but no mic presence at all. And we we, we can I talk like all the, night about that and point fingers. We already know who those people are already without having to point them out. <laughs> but well, I you know what I say is there's Paul Heyman, and then there's everybody else. Right, right. And now, but, did um, you all watch the pre-show by any chance? No, no. Didn't watch I was just wondering. Because I, I, the one match I seen in the pre-show um, was Kane against uh, Luke Harper, and Kane's mm-hmm. um, ends up getting the win against Luke Harper, which I don't get either. Because you're trying to push the younger Luke Harper, it seems like, but you're still letting Kane get the upper hand on him. And yeah. uh, it was just you know just that. And, and to be honest with you, his his ch- he beat with the choke slam. His choke slams are starting to look weak these days to me. But maybe it's just me. I don't know. I don't know if there was another pre-match or not. I think there was one more pre-show match, and I missed it. And whatever it was, I don't know. I have to look it up later. But it's just the pre-show, so I'm not too overly concerned about it. But um, you know, the, 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 what did you guys think overall about the women's match, though? Were you uh, surprised by the outcome in any way? Did you like the outcome? I was surprised. I'm not going to lie. I was surprised that Bailey was going to be the one um, to get the uh, – the tap. Um, I'm upset with some of the botching that, that happened, especially the double DDT with um, Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch on Nia Jax. And that was mm-hmm. god awful. Um, I just, hey. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of a Nia Jax. I was scared of an Awesome Kong slash Karma, which I was half hoping would come out. Um, but um, I'm not scared of her. She's not somebody that's intimidating. Like, it's fun to watch her throw people around. Um, but, you know, whatever. The match itself, uh, if, though, was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Um, if you want to complain about botches, you should have seen the Kane-Luke Harper match. I don't know if it was Luke Harper uh, helping make Kane look better, or they both just sucked it up tonight. I don't know which, but botch fest, you know, we'll just say. Yeah, botch fest. But as far as the women's match goes... Um, uh, I love that Bailey got the win, and I'm glad it kind of set up for the uh, the feud with Charlotte. Um, I love Charlotte. A lot of people don't. I absolutely I do. adore her. I love her because I think she has presence. Hmm? Who? Say again. Charlotte. Oh, I Charlotte. Her. Okay. 
because a lot of Charlotte. people don't. And a lot of people say, oh, she flares kids. No, no, no. This girl has it. She's always had it. She is, you know, that she won the genetic uh, gene pool. Uh, if that were the case that she's, oh, it's because she's Flair's kid, then uh, David Flair would have been a champion ten times over. So right. you, ha- you have to understand that the things that she does is amazing. Does she botch? Yeah. Does she sometimes, you know, mess up on the mic? Yeah, sure. But for the most part, she hasn't. So I'm kind of glad that that went down. Um, and I'm glad, most in part, I was very impressed with uh, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch puts on a great match all the time. Um, right. She just, you know, she's a she's she's a, a wrestler's wrestler. Um, and I think she's the one that made it the best out of the night, um, considering all the boxes. Well, I will say this about the women's match, and just I'll let you guys heads up, guys. We got four minutes left on the show. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. I didn't get to adjust right. to two hours like I wanted to earlier, but we got four minutes left. Uh, I think they did the women's match the way they did, so they can build up a, a, a more heated feud with uh, Bailey and Charlotte right now, having her jumper like she did for taking her spotlight, quote unquote. You know how she had said it and everything. I think it's why they did that. But before we go, three and a half minutes here. I'm gonna get you guys' opinion, uh, Lee. Who do you think is going to be a surprise entrance to the Royal Rumble this year? If you could pick one person, who's going to be your surprise entrant? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, just throw a name out there. I know, I know, it's I know it's hard to pick. Just throw a name out there you think might possibly make a debut at the Royal Rumble. They may not even be there on the roster full time, but they're going to be in the Royal Rumble. Shinsuke. Okay, you got Nakamura. KJ? Yeah. Uh, depending on if he's champion or not, um, I'm going to go Samoa, Samoa Joe. Both very good Samoa picks. Joe. Both yeah. very good picks. I, I, to be honest with you, I was going to say Nakamura because he lost the belt. Uh, I think yeah, it's a very right. good possibility he would show up like AJ showed up and everybody thought AJ would win the Royal Rumble when he got there. Uh, they'll, they'll think the same thing if Nakamura shows up. Oh, he's going to win the Royal Rumble. He's here. He's here. And then, you know, he'll be you know, third or fourth one out probably or something, or maybe a little bit, he'll last a little bit longer maybe, but he'll he'll be he'll be tossed out eventually and work his way like AJ did for a, a few more things there. But if I was to be different than you guys and pick somebody else, then yeah, I guess I would go, you know, probably at Bobby Roode because that glorious thing really has people going right now. They're liking his, uh, his gimmick he's got. And um, just the name Roode in the WWE says a lot right there, you know, because uh, people – Flashback to you know, ravishing Rick Rude. Although this is glorious Bobby Rude, a little bit different, right. you know, style, different aspect about him, but still, I can see Bobby Rude showing up in the Royal Rumble and maybe not making the main roster, but still staying at NXT, but just showing up for that at least. So, like Bo Dallas but, did a couple of years back. Exactly, just you know, stuff like that. But anyway, guys, we're down to a minute and forty-five. We got to go ahead and start wrapping up. Unfortunately, Lee, thanks for calling tonight. If you ever get a chance to call in again, with us, we do this every week, pretty much at the same time, and call in anytime you want to. Um, so make sure everybody knows out there, we're taking all of our podcasts now. We're uploading them all to YouTube. Uh, I would tell you the YouTube address, but it's a long, drawn out bunch of letters and numbers crap that they do, and I don't know it by heart. But if you go to YouTube and search "Body Slam the Competition." Uh, you Sorry will find us it. on there, and it it is and, and there you go. If you look at us on, if you like us on Facebook, you can get the link straight off Facebook. It's there pretty much every other day anyway. But we are at Facebook BodySlamTheCompetition dot com. We're on Instagram BodySlamTheCompetition dot com, at BodySlamTheComp at Twitter, and of course we're taking all our podcasts from Blog Talk Radio that we do every week here at blogtalkradio.com dot com slash BodySlamTheCompetition and uploading them to YouTube for a more fun experience. And, KJ, we're going to be doing what possibly here soon? Making ourselves into um, a live video show, possibly. If we do this... Yeah, a live we video will, show. I'm sorry. Yes, possibly a live video show to have some more fun with it. And if we do that, uh, I promise you it will be a blast to watch. We will make something great out Absolutely. of it. But in the meantime, well, you will still just be stuck hearing our angelic voices and not seeing oh. our good-looking mugs on camera instead. Until later. <laughs> We're glorious. That's right. <laughs> Where's that? I need that sound file now. That's what I need. All right, guys. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up and call it a weekend. Lee, thanks again for calling in. KJ, thanks for being on no as problem. always. And we will do this again next week, guys. 